a Chinese induction nightlight. And I get the feeling that perhaps they just copied someone else's listing here because when you look at the induction nightlight, which induction normally means like a body sensor, like a pass through infrared detector, and when it says things like three meter range, you are expecting a pass through infrared sensor or a Doppler detector. In this case, it's a very interesting detector because it works by pushing it on and off. That is not an induction sensor. But nonetheless, we have this, uh, its other feature here, it comes with the Chinese socket pins. Uh, the other feature is you can just unscrew the top off, revealing live connections, which isn't that great for a nightlight intended perhaps for a children's room. However, you're probably wanting to see this lit, and this is where it gets very awkward, because that means I'm going to have to go through to the toilet here and film in the crew bathroom here, because uh, that's the only way I'm going to find a socket this fits in. So uh, let's go through to the bathroom, shall we? And there we are. A little bit of flicker going on, as you can see. Uh, you can also see the mirror in here has been mounted by a very, very short joiner, because this is actually what I see when I look at standard mirrors. Uh, in fact, hold on, that's more likely what I see when you're looking at standard mirrors in places like this, because the joiners don't seem to understand, or the bathroom fitters that the tall mirror, the mirror has to be the height of tall people. Uh, also worthy of note our lovely, lovely student grade shower cubicle here, complete with the shower head at face height. Now, other things that we can do here. I can plug this, since this is a shaver socket, into the 110 volt outlet. And it still lights, ooh, doesn't like that. Uh, it still lights, but isn't terribly bright. Okay, back to the bench. Uh, in hindsight, I should have checked that it was in focus, because that was probably set quite close focus, but not to worry, it's got the the image of the thing across, most likely. Hmm, interesting. I shall unscrew the cap in this to reveal the bare circuit board, and we can already see there's six LEDs, a rectifier, and what looks like a resistor. <clears throat> That's a very simple resistive dropper, if it is. It pops apart, complete with the pass for a detector. It's not really uh, to reveal that the circuit board has been soldered directly to the pins. That's what holds it in here. And uh, presumably being clamped in there as well. It is just a resistor. What the value is that resistor? It is 623-62K. I have measured the voltage across the LEDs. They appear to be six chip LEDs. The voltage measured across them was about 90 volts, which leaves, uh, so what's the dissipation of that resistor going to be? Let me just compute that. One moment, please. Computation is complete. Uh, it's passing about 2.4 milliamps, and the dissipation from that little, what I'd class a quarter watt resistor, is 0.36 watts. To be honest, I'd rather they'd use two resistors for the voltage rating and also to spread the dissipation, but they didn't. How expensive is a resistor, China? I mean, geez, they could have put one on the other side, breaking the track to the bridge rectifier over there as well. It's just like, why do they do this? It's very strange. Very strange indeed. Also, instead of putting it in line to the bridge rectifier, They've uh, kind of got it looping back underneath here. I shall draw you the schematic for this. That's the best bet. One moment, please. And here is the schematic. The incoming AC supply uh, goes to the resistor first, which is surprising. Then it goes to the switch, and the other leg goes straight to the uh, bridge rectifier. It goes through the bridge rectifier, and then it's just six LEDs in series, uh, configured as six chips per LED. Very simple. It's almost like the, the configuration of the tracks around the bottom here is very odd. Like, not really logically thought out. It's very strange how they've done it. But that's how they've done it. Kind of looping back in itself. It's very strange. But it is what they've done. Uh, interesting. So that is what's inside this completely not induction nightlight. It's definitely got a range of three meters. You just have to walk over three meters and press the button. That's how it works. But there we go. Interesting, but uh, I mean, I suppose one redeeming feature, they have used the multi-chip LEDs. And the good thing about that is that, say for instance, the, I've got one here, the Poundland equivalent uh, uses three LEDs, but they're just uh, single chip LEDs in here. 
So uh, the, it's kind of less efficient. A lot more is being dissipated across the resistors, but the resistors are actually better rated than this one. But this is perhaps better approach in that regard. It's more efficient, but it still means that they could have done with an extra resistor in here. But that's not a surprise for this type of product. But interesting to take apart anyway. Well worth taking apart and exploring.